Hi and welcome to a new video. As you can see on my table we have a bunch of new hardware AMD based. We have the 5700 XT MSI Evoque, we have an X570 board which also comes from MSI, Cooler Master, um, PSU and AIO. We will go through all the components in a bit. MSI sent this kit to me, asked if I can build it into an MSI case which I didn't have space to put it on my table in addition. But we will go through all the components in a bit. MSI asked me to just assemble a system under the motto play fast, play cold, especially in consideration of the special heatsink design we have on the X570 ACE motherboard. So let's just go through all the components before we start assembly. Starting with the MSI Mac X570 ACE, one of my favorite boards for X570, at least what I've seen during Computex. We already talked about this board during Computex. What makes it cool is the Zero Frozen chipset fan. It's semi-passive, so it doesn't scream into your ears all the time. Actually, it doesn't because it's typically not turned on. What is really cool about this uh, whole design when it comes to the heat sinks is that we have this heat pipe coming from the chipset fan going up to this top part of the VRM block and also continuing to the left side of the VRM block. Typically this part on top left here, uh, which is the CPU V core, should get the, the warmest or the hottest during load, uh, depending on your CPU obviously, and then all the heat can go to the top one and also to the bottom one, because underneath we have a 12 plus 2 phase CPU design, 12 phases for V core and 2 phases that are up here on the top right for SOC. So this shouldn't become as hot as this part and then the heat can spread through the heat pipe to the top block and also down to the chipset fan and if it would be really necessary let's say you have 40 degree ambient outside and you're doing NVMe uh, raid on the drives and then your chipset fan would switch on and would cool not only the chipset, the PCH or FCH it's called uh, for AMD but also the VRMs. So Design-wise, when it comes to cooling, I think this board should be pretty much ideal also for the upcoming 3950X. We don't have this CPU yet, the 12 core. For this video, we will use the 3800X, which is the 8 core. Should be a little bit higher bint than the 3700X. So far, I didn't test a retail 3800X only initially when I did my Ryzen 3000 testing. I was testing an engineering sampler 3800X. So we will see if this CPU can live up to its boost of 4.5 gigahertz. And we will also test how far we can push the CPU on all cores. For example, if you're doing Adobe Premiere, you would want the maximum frequency across all cores for maximum processing power. That's what we will test with this CPU on this board. Visually, if we're just talking about this board, we have this infinity mirror on the top left, which will give you this infinity effect with mirrors inside. We have gigabit LAN and 2.5 gigabit LAN, so two times network, depending on what kind of network solution you have at home and what you can use. For storage, we will use the MP600 generation 4 NVMe drive, which comes from Corsair. In this case, we will actually disassemble the MP600, we will remove the heatsink and put it underneath one of those heatsinks which is already on the motherboard. I personally just prefer if it looks more smooth and if this doesn't stick out, so I will just put it underneath one of those shields of the MSI board. For memory, we will use the Dominator Platinum RGB memory sticks with 3200 MHz and we will also use four modules and I think with four modules and 3200 Ryzen 3000 is typically a little bit on the limit. It depends on your mainboard, your CPU and also your memory sticks. If you you're able to run 3200 on uh, four DIMMs. That's typically a big challenge for the Ryzen 3000. On some CPUs I saw uh, only 26666 megahertz was possible, but it really is mainboard um, CPU and also memory dependent. Obviously, we will test what's possible. Some quick words about the 5700 XT from MSI, the Evoke version. It differs a lot from the reference design just by Looking at it, you can directly see that this doesn't have this typical blower design from AMD and it's also a lot cooler. I just saw a recent review from Gamers Nexus where they were comparing this card to a reference design while the fans were adjusted to the noise level of 40 dBA. And in this case, this card was 25 degrees colder on the core than the reference design, which really speaks to itself, which really um, speaks about this card. It comes with a zero frozer um, cooler and the Torx fan design it's called from MSI. Um, those fans are also available as case fans. This is just a typical um, MSI fan design which you can see on a lot of cards and products they're using, also a CPU cooler for example. I left the sticker on here on purpose, mainly because at Case King for example we get a lot of people calling us and saying, hey, 
my graphics card is maybe not working because the fans are not spinning but it's a semi-passive fan design so if you're using this card the fans are not spinning if they're cold and idle so don't be afraid that's the way it should be because then you have more silence when you're not playing a game the PSU is the V750, comes from Cooler Marsh, so is semi-passive, has a 135mm fan, also has this hybrid mode, so you have this small button on the back which you can switch on and off, which means that your fan is allowed to run in the semi-passive mode or not. The PSU is also fully modular, so yeah, we can only use the cables which we need when we assemble the PC. The AIO is the Master Liquid ML240 RGB, obviously comes with RGB. We have two RGB fans, I already assembled them on to the radiator. The radiator is an aluminium radiator, which you can just notify by the weight. It's extremely light, but also looking inside the paint, you can see that this is an aluminium radiator. Cooler Master is assembling and designing them in-house themselves. Cooler Master is a little bit different from most of the other AIO vendors because they're really just producing it also themselves. Most other AIO companies would do that with Acetech, but this is a Cooler Master design, so it's a little bit different. Also, the accessories are a lot different. We have a ton of RGB adapters and also USB adapters, so everything you would ever need is already included, which is something I really like because you have such a ton of different connectors on different main boards. And depending on how you want to add the RGB into your loop, you always need adapter cables, and all of them are included with the ML240R. That's cool. We also have different USB cables depending if you want to do internal USB or if you want to do external USB. All the cables are included and my favorite factor is an additional RGB controller and I'm not joking I'm really a fan of external RGB controllers because they don't rely on software you can always use them you don't rely on any software because depending on what kind of software you're using from different man manufacturers let's say you have the Corsair stuff in there you have the MSI stuff in there um, then you can just put this in there and there will never be a software conflict no matter what kind of uh, other hardware you're using and especially, for example, you're powering on your system, if you're just booting up, your RGB software is not initialized yet. And in this case, the hardware controller always works. That's cool. I'm really a fan of hardware control. MSI sent in addition this small batch, which we can put on top of the AIO. Currently, we have this Cooler Master logo on there. We can replace the Cooler Master logo with the MSI logo. You could probably design your own logo and put it on there, whatever you like. Last in line is the MSI Sekira 500G, also available as X and P version. You can just check them online to see what's the difference. The X version comes with an additional 200mm fan in the front, which is something I like even more. So visually, really, really nice case. Has an aluminium brushed front and also top. Has uh, two side panels with tempered glass, so on the left and on the right. Just open them. The case has space for a 360 red in top and 280 red in the front, so it's also custom water cooling ready if you want, but in today's video we will just mount our um, Cooler Master um, AIO in the top. Also obviously comes with USB Type-C, so everything what you want and need is available on the front panel on the top. So much about the components, let's start assembly.
System is completely assembled up and running as you can see. I'm really happy with how it looks like and also how it performs. We will talk about that in a minute. Um, just about the visuals, really happy with how the Corsair Dominator modules look like with this wave effect that's pretty cool in combination with the blue illuminated um, Cooler Master AIO. Yeah, not bad. Also put my MSI Dragon in there. Thanks to MSI for sending this uh, thing over. I will put it in my background afterwards. Anyway, talking about the performance, I think I won the silicon lottery with my 3800X. My CPU is doing 4.4 at 1.375 volt. And that's really, really cool. Um, when I was doing the stock operation, the CPU was running at about 4.3, 4.35 boost all core with about 1.42 volt. So I managed to undervolt my CPU compared to stock and also overclock it. Currently running 4.4, I was also able to run it at 4.45. So this CPU is really, really good. But I needed 1.44, 1.45 volt for that. And I think almost another 60 or 70 millivolt, considering that you get 50, uh, 50 megahertz in return, is not worth it. So this seems to be kind of the sweet spot for the CPU. You can see Prime95 is running in the background. I've been running this for about one, one and a half hours in the background. Also monitoring uh, frequency, temperatures and everything with uh, hardware info. You can see average temperature in hardware info is 78 degrees Celsius. And you might maybe think that's a lot, but Prime95 is pretty much the maximum load you can get on your CPU, considering that it's running 4.4 across all cores with manual OC and also considering that I have 31 degrees Celsius here in my room because in Germany right now it's so damn hot outside and I'm really suffering in here. If we would have the typical, let's say 23, 22 degrees Celsius room temperature, then this would run Prime 95 at about, I don't know, below 80 degrees Celsius. And then you have even more headroom for OC. Cooling wise, I'm totally satisfied with the system and also clockwise. I'm really happy that my uh, 3800X is running at 4.4. It's funny that MSI asked me uh, to compare this with the stock cooler, for example. Uh, yeah, no chance. <laughs> if I'm running the 4.4 at this voltage with the stock cooler out of the box, it just immediately shuts down because uh, yeah, the cooling is so much worse with the stock cooler than with this AIO that I just cannot perform any benchmark um, at this manual OC. So I skipped this test. A quick word about the VRMs of the motherboard. As I said in the initial introduction, the VRMs on this board are extremely solid, the 12 phase design. And you can see after one and a half hours of Prime 95, we're only hitting about 60 degrees Celsius on the VRM. And considering that, as I said before, we have about 30 degrees Celsius room temperature in here, this is a very solid result. Um, I think during game load, you will maybe have, I don't know, like 50 degrees Celsius. So this is far from anything that could be a problem. And I'm pretty sure that this board is also ready for the uh, 3950X, this upcoming 16 core. Even with manual OC, I'm sure this VRM will not hit above 80 degrees Celsius in any normal condition. If you're not sure if you put your SSD in the correct slot, obviously in this case this would never happen because all of the three NVMe M.2 slots are um, connected with generation 4. But on some boards, if you're not sure if it's generation 4 or generation 3, you can simply run crystal disk mark. You can see on my uh, MP600, I, I hit about 4900 megabyte per second read and 4260 megabyte per second write, which is perfectly in line with what the uh, SSD is capable of and also what it should be capable of. Also, this is much higher than what would be technically possible with generation three PCI Express. So you can be sure that this would be the correct performance and also the correct slot. One quick benchmark, which I performed with the RX 5700 XT Evoke. It was done in Shadow of the Tomb Raider with 1080p max details, Windows 10 latest version and with the R7 3800X at 4.4 gigahertz manual OC across all cores. You can see the average FPS and also the 1% low. You can see on top is the RTX 2080, 2080 Founders Edition, followed by the RX 5700 XT Evoke, which is just on top of the Radeon 7 by two FPS in minimum, because this chart is sorted by minimum FPS. You can see average, the Radeon 7 was one FPS ahead, followed by RTX 2060 Founders Edition and the GTX 1070. We will now take a quick look into PUBG because I want to show you the load on the individual cores in PUBG, which was higher than I expected. For some reason, I thought that PUBG would only use like four to six cores, but it seems to make good use out of the eight cores. Middle in the game of PUBG. 
I just personally like the game, that's why uh, yeah, just always use it for benchmarks and stuff. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to use it for comparable benchmarks because you only always have to run around online and uh, have to make sure that you're in the same location and to make sure that no other people are around. But yeah, for just showing the load across the course, I think this is fine. You can see on the top left corner, I'm using FPS Mon to monitor the current um, clock and also the temperature, also the core usage. You can see temperature doesn't exceed 70 degrees Celsius. Um, of course, in, the, in this moment it hits 72. Um, usually it's somewhere between 60 and 70 from what I've seen previously. You can see a good load across all the cores. Some cores sometimes hit like 70 or 80 percent, so there is definitely a load. There was just somebody with a car, but I uh, didn't spot him. Anyway, uh, temperature is good. Um, it's absolutely stable. As you can see, 1% low currently, 99 FPS. Uh, that's yeah, perfectly playable with PUBG. But that just shows how much difference there is between um, just using, for example, um, Prime95 for load testing, where you can see like upper 80s temperature-wise, but then in the game, it's like, like currently 61 degrees Celsius, even though it's exactly the same condition with 4.4G uh, and 1.36-1.37 uh, volt. So much about this video. Uh, luckily, yeah, I, I won the Silicon Lottery with this uh, 3800X, but I can also recommend um, pretty much all the other components um, from what I've tested. There's nothing bad I can say about them. And yeah, thanks for joining in. See you next time. Dum 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 dum